Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. Today I wanted to talk about the changes and additions to the Star Citizen Alpha 2.3 PTU. This patch will obviously get some more fixes, attention, some polish before it goes to live and we may even possibly get some extra features. So firstly, the big ones for people, the added ships. The Shan Scout is now flyable. The ship currently though is very sluggish and flies much like a Hornet at the moment. Though this will get rebalanced and sorted out almost certainly before live so the ship is flying a lot more agile and fast the ship looks amazing though it has its own quantum travel effects and transforms from vertical flight to horizontal modes for landing and it's the currently the only ship that has that size 3 m5a laser cannon this is an extremely good weapon at the moment hopefully both the ship and the m5a will be available to rent in the electronic access store in rec with the release of the live build the Starfarer is finally hangar ready and it was well worth the wait. This massive four floored ship has had to have a larger extension built onto the Rebel and York hangar. There are a couple of lighting bugs, but the ship has left me speechless and lost, especially the first time I saw it. If you have a Starfarer on your account and the Rebel and York hangar configured as your active hangar, it will auto load the extra hangar and add the staff error at the end. This ship is currently the largest available ship in the hangar that we currently have and is, is a beautiful, beautiful piece of work. You can explore this for, for a while. It's like a whole FPS level by itself. When the patch goes live, both the Jean Scout and the staff error will go on sale again and staff error Gemini owners should be getting hangar loaners of the base staff error to explore. This is supposed to be included in this PTU patch uh, and is supposed to be fixed soon. So if they do another uh, PTU patch or another wave, it should be there for staff error Gemini owners. There's some added items too. FPS weapons wise, the electric shotgun and arrowhead sniper rifle have both been added to the FPS weapons findable in the mini persistent universe around Crusader. They appear in the yellow asteroid field in a few set locations, in set pieces of wrecks of ships, normally defended by pirates. It's yet another encounter that 2.3 has added. You will have to EV out of your ship and search the cargo boxes to find those weapons. I've linked a guide in the description description for how to get them quickly but the shotgun and sniper are both extremely powerful weapons at the moment the sniper rifle can zoom in and has that cool little scope and um, shown what it's kind of looking at in the form of a camera and the electric shotgun is just brutally cool item system 2.0 has undergone further implementation as well in the form of power plants so all ships have now been retrofitted with generic power plants um, for their new kind of um, implementation of this to provide them with power levels similar to what they had before. An additional two power plants have also been added into the mix, the Regulus and Overdrive. Those two can be mounted to um, the Avenger, Aurora, Mustang 300 series, Hornet, Gladiator, Gladius, M50 and P52 Merlin. The rest of the power plants have been refactored as sort of the ships for their appropriate sizes. So now, for example, the 325A, instead of being able to mount one power plant, it now has three size one or um, three light power plant mounts. So it can select from all the different power plants and fit three of them in there. So the Super Hornet as well, another example is it can mount one size two or one medium power plant. There are a few other little changes to the Mini PU and Port Olisar. They've added additional security and AI around Port Olisar that will attack players that have a wanted level. Um, as mentioned earlier, Rex and Pirate Encounters are now in yellow uh, and they've also changed um, the coverage for monitoring zones. Uh, for example, Korea is now also covered too. Animations have had various improvements, balances, polish and additions, and they will continue to work a lot on um, the animations through the PTU phase and in general for patches to come. Uh, fixes, there have been some major fixes especially with desync. The major 2.2 issue has been fixed in 2.3. There's no more desync, or not that I've discovered it anyway in the first person shooter stuff. And um, so this is where you weren't appearing where you're supposed to be or where drunken pilots had collapsed on the ground and didn't appear to be moving. But on their screens, they were in a totally different area. 
EVA fixes as well, and they've sorted out a lot of the random deaths from EVAing or getting in and out of your ship as well. Lots of glitches and teleport bugs and the first person shooter stuff have also been fixed. Some other important notes and callouts. Multiplayer Arena Commander was disabled for this current PTU testing phase. They're trying to test out performance in Crusader at the moment. That's a, a very much um, a big thing at the moment, a focus for them. Uh, PTU players in the initial test have also been given access to that Xi'an Scout. Every Everyone's got that in the PTU first wave. The Croy Astra repair station landing pads do currently break if a pilot tries to take off during a repair sequence. Um, certain AI in Crusader were experiencing some difficulty flying and derping. Uh, the ambient audio from Dumper's Depot was also being broadcast through all of Arc Corp occasionally. There is a good few random client crashes and server crashes. That's kind of to be expected with the PTU and the PTU hardware. A user.cfg file seemed to make the game a lot more unstable in this PTU phase. This is the first time I've seen it being really unstable with certain PTU uh, settings for the um, user.cfg stuff. So just be aware of that. If you're using a user.cfg, I recommend holding off until the live build at the very least, and I'll see what we can do with them. Uh, wave 1 PTU stuff uh, is, is what we're currently on at the moment. So I think up to 6,000 people are in at the moment. They will be adding extra players into the PTU if required in, in waves up to 5. If you want to be in uh, for a better chance of getting in and getting selected for PTU builds, uh, be active on the issue council reporting and contributing bugs, uh, participate in any PTUs you do get access to uh, and any stress tests that were also announced. The party system as well, that seems to be working but isn't working in the same way it was uh, in 2.2. It isn't showing your friends in game in the PTU, although if you create a party and join at similar times, you do seem to always get into the mini PU together. Some of the ship HUDs have been updated and some of the panels in ships have been physicalized. And that's basically it for the 2.3 first release PTU build uh, notes and patch changes. So. Um, it's going to get some more work, it's going to get some more love uh, and attention. We might get some new features. I've seen some really weird bugs myself as well. Um, more physics based bugs now, where like ships will accelerate um, if they've been damaged, just spinning around uh, forever, getting faster and faster until you get a server crash. Uh, weird things like that. So I think this might be implementation of other various features. The most exciting thing here for me, other than obviously those new ships, was the further implementation of item system 2.0 with those power plants. Anyway, guys, please tell me what you think about the PTU uh, 2.3 patch. Uh, tell me what features that you uh, hope will be in for 2.4 or hope they might add uh, as a sneak in, into 2.3 before it goes live. Um, did you get into the PTU yourselves? Do you want to be in there? Don't you care? Is it too much effort? Because these kind of patches, they are a lot of work, as in uh, it's not just, yay, we've got loads of gameplay, it's amazing in the PTU. It is hard work. There are crashes, there are loads of random bugs. Uh, it's not a privilege, <laughs> it's a chore. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for listening. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the verse.